created it by hand from mighty mountains to the raging sea to every leaf on every single tree it's in the holy book just open up and take a look A long time ago, Jesus traveled the land teaching people how to be good to each other and to love God. Many people listened and learned from his stories, but some didn't understand and had questions. What are you doing, Jesus? You are sitting with sinners. How can you be a teacher sent by God if you speak to tax collectors. These men take our money and give it to the emperor. We've even heard you eat with these men. They have turned their backs on God. I'm sure God will have nothing to do with them. Why should you? All people are special to God. Let me tell you a story. Once there was a shepherd with a hundred sheep, but he lost one of them. Jesus told how the shepherd wanted all of his lambs safe. He looked and looked. Until one day. The shepherd had a big celebration because he had found what he had lost. But Jesus, the shepherd, was just doing his job. There's more joy in heaven over someone who was lost and then found, who changes his life for God, than over 99 people who don't need to change. Jesus then told about a woman who had 10 silver coins. but she lost one of them. When the woman discovered she had lost the one coin, she was very upset. She spent the whole night looking for her lost coin. She told her friends and they celebrated. because she had found what she had lost. That's the way God feels about people. In heaven, the angels sing whenever a person says he or she believes in God and wants to live a better life. But Jesus, in your stories, the shepherd and the poor woman lost valuable things. 
And all sinners, especially tax collectors, are worthless bad people. There's another story. A story about forgiveness and love. There was once a man who was both a wealthy farmer and a loving father. <laughs> the father tried to teach them how to take care of things. Thank you, Reuben, but where is your... Ah, Benjamin. Even though his sons were very different, he loved them both the same. The father hoped they would grow up to be hard-working farmers. But as the younger son grew up, he dreamed of distant places. He didn't want to stay on his father's farm. The son decided to leave his home the very next day. Father, I had a wonderful dream last night. Really? What kind of... I was riding the finest horse in the city. Oh, the well, city's a nice place to visit, but... Everyone stared at me because I was handsome, smart, and wealthy. Yes, you are all of those. Father, farm life is fine for you. You're a farmer, but it's not for me. There are things I have to do. Places I have to see. You're leaving home? Yes. You have always promised my brother and me an inheritance. Money for us. But it's for your future. Oh, please, Father. I want my money now. I must see the world, starting today. But the father did not want his son to leave. He would miss him a great deal. Thank you, Father. I'm rich! Hey, that's not fair. Benjamin can't take his money and leave like this. <sighs> if that's what he wants, he can do it. Don't worry about the farm, Father. Reuben will be here. But I care about you. I'll miss you, my son. I'll be all right. I'm going to see the world. Wave goodbye to your brother. The father could only hope that one day he'd see his son again. No more dirty hands, no more back aches, and no more work. Ew. 
Isn't it magnificent? It was the son's first time out in the world, and he wanted to buy everything he saw. Well, what do you think? Now all I need is to be seen riding a magnificent horse. Thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty. You have bought the finest horse in my stable. Well, I deserve the best, you know. Uh, do you want that mule anymore? He reminds me of my father's farm. None of my horses are worth 40 coins. Why, this mule is worth twice that much. <laughs> the fool doesn't care how he spends his money. I see something else to buy. I don't care what it costs. I must be seen riding through the streets today. Whoa! Horsey! Whoa! Father, I've listed all of our animals. Thanks, Robin. That was a lot of work. Uh, I was just thinking about your brother. I'm sure you miss him as much as I do. The son was still spending money. He hadn't learned his lesson yet. I'm sorry, you'll have to leave. I have customers waiting. I beg your pardon, sir. Uh, how about a big fluffy pillow? The boy still only thought about himself. Ladies and gentlemen, for your dining pleasure, be Ira and his funny monkey. <laughs> <laughs> I must have that monkey! <laughs> Whoa! Excuse me, sir, but you have stayed here for a week. Will you pay your bill? Oh, is money all you want? Uh-oh. Out. Get out of my inn. <coughs> this.
this will pay for your bills. Benjamin was now alone and very hungry. Well, what am I going to do? For the first time in his life, the son had to beg for food. Ah, uh, no free food? The boy was so hungry, he needed to find work, any work. But the only job he could find was the worst possible. Watch it! Don't make, well, pigs of yourselves. Oh, I'm so hungry. <sighs> Thanks, little pig. so foolishly. A pigsty is fine, if you're a pig. But it's not for me. At my father's farm, everyone, even the helpers, have a place to sleep, enough to eat. Wait a minute. I'll go home. Well, father won't want me back as a son. Not after the way I treated him. But anything's better than this mess. Hey, he, he might give me a job on his farm. I'm never gonna snap my fingers like that ever again. So the son decided to go home, and he hoped that his father would not send him away. Thank God, he's come back. Sir, your son is coming home. Benjamin, my son is back. <laughs> My brother is back. This is a very bad idea. My father won't even want to talk to me. Uh-oh, too late. Is he going to be mad? Father, I'm sorry for leaving, and now I only ask to work in your fields. I shouldn't even be called your son anymore. Ah! <laughs> oh, welcome. Oh, welcome home. I'm so happy you're safe. What? Let's have a big party. Father? Uh, I don't understand. Send for food, lots of food, and get some musicians. My son has returned home. But the older son was jealous of his brother. Whoa! Out of my way. Tell me, is the banner hanging straight? No, it's all wrong. Everything's wrong. The father welcomed his last son back home. <laughs> and the son realized how much his father loved him. When I had it made Just a slave to a broken heart Till I found my father's open arms Feels so good to be home again No 
more room in the world like the wind I won't go back to where I've been Feels so good to be home again Feels so good to be home again My boy is back, yes it's true Set the table, prepare the food Watch me dance, bless this day So good to know he's home to stay My lost son is home again No more roaming the world like the wind I don't care where he's been My lost son is here again My lost son is home again thought my father would welcome back a boy like me now i can hardly believe the celebration feast my lost son is home again no more roaming the world like the wind i don't care where he's been my lost son is home again feels so good to be home again No more roaming the world like the wind I won't go back to where I've been Feels so good to be home again My lost son is home Where's Reuben? We can't celebrate without him. Hmm. You're missing Benjamin's party. I won't go. It's not fair. Father, I stayed with you and helped you with the farm, but you never gave me a party. But as soon as my lazy brother wanders back home, he gets a feast. My son, anytime you want a party, you'll get it. Huh? I love you with all my heart. But today is something special. Your brother has returned. Like the tree we planted when you both were little. In the winter it's empty and you might think it's dead, but in the spring it comes back to life. I'm happy because I thought my son was dead, but he's alive, and now he's safe here with us. Come, celebrate with me. <laughs> I've been a thoughtless brother. Can you ever forgive me? <laughs> Welcome home, brother. The father is like God. He is full of joy and forgiveness when someone decides to follow him. No matter what we have done, who we are, God will always love us. Bah! We are not convinced. God even forgives the Pharisees. Everyone else listened as Jesus told more stories that day, and they learned how God treasures every child, every man, and every woman.
created it by hand from mighty mountains to the raging sea to every leaf on every single tree it's in the holy book just open up and take a look The 12 tribes of Israel were led out of Egypt by Moses. God had promised them a home of their own, a land called Canaan. But once they got there, many Israelites were afraid of the armies of Canaan. they didn't trust God to help them win their battles. They wanted to go back to Egypt where they had been slaves. God decided that since they didn't trust him, they couldn't enter the promised land, and he had them wander the deserts for 40 years. After 40 years, God led the children of the 12 tribes back to the promised land. But instead of it being a time of joy, the Israelites were full of sadness. Their leader Moses had died, so they didn't have anyone to lead them to their new home. Boys, behave yourselves. Today we are remembering Moses. Joshua, who helped Moses for those 40 years, was remembering the great leader in his own special way. <gasps> Come to cheer me up, Turnip. What will happen to our people now that Moses is gone? Who will guide us to the promised land? Why not you, Joshua? Turn it. You, you, you talked. It's me, Joshua. God? I've chosen you, Joshua, to lead the Israelites into the Promised Land. No, I can't. You helped Moses. But he was a great leader. I'm just an ordinary man, a simple servant. Don't be afraid. There is greatness in every man who has faith, Joshua. God, where is the land you promised us? Look west. What do you see? The desert floor and the Jordan River. Beyond that, foothills and green. The promised land. Take your people, Joshua. But I can't lead them. I'm frightened. Yes, you will face many dangers, but be strong. Remember, I will never leave you. Because Joshua loved God and obeyed his rules, God protected him. God's rules, known as the Ten Commandments, were written on stone tablets inside the Holy Ark. The river's very swift. Crossing won't be easy. Oh, this is foolish. <laughs> Following Joshua as if he were Moses. 
Are you coming, Aram? Come, let's see what will happen. How about there, Joshua? I'll see how deep it is. Do you think you can cross it, little one? Oh, come on, it's just a little water. No! <laughs> Who are you? Go away! I am Joshua, leader of the Israelites. God has promised us this land. <laughs> Did he? Well, I'm the king of Jericho, and you can't enter. We are protected by this swift river and the strongest wall in the world. If you can cross this river, you better be prepared for a fight. Our God protects us, as he protected Moses, our leader. <laughs> yes, I've heard that your God parted the Red Sea, but he has no power here. Stay away from Jericho, or my army will destroy you. What do we do, Joshua? Have faith and cross the river when God tells us to. You heard Joshua. Let's tell the others. Oh. <clears throat> I'm worried about this king of Jericho. He's like the waters of this river. Dangerous. Joshua. Yes, God? Don't be afraid of the king. If you trust me, I will protect you. Joshua did trust in God. He selected two men to sneak into Jericho and tell him about the king's army. One, two, three soldiers. Oh, that third one is tiny. I'll only count him as half a soldier. Aram! We're spies. That means we have to be quiet. Go oh, quiet. Right. Spy! Oh, King, I'm only a harmless traveling merchant. Liar! You're a stranger in Jericho, so I say you're a spy! Hey! Shh. But he can't do that! More spies! Israelite spies! That's being quiet! Catch them! Stop the spies! Catch the Israelites! They must be here somewhere! My name's Rahab. I want to help. This way. Under here. Quickly. Open your doors! By order of the king! Out of my way! The Israelite spies! Did you see them? They were here, but they ran toward the city gates. If you hurry, you might still catch them. The king will be very unhappy if you let them get away. Mm. 
Rahab told the Israelites it was safe to come out of their hiding place. That was a very brave thing you did. Why did you risk your life for us, two strangers? Everyone in Jericho knows the Israelites are coming to our land. We've heard that your God rules the heavens above and the earth below. He's so powerful. He parted the Red Sea for Moses. Now our men are afraid to fight you. Go, hide in the hills for three days. Then you'll be safe. God bless you, Rahab. You're very kind. Wait. I showed kindness to you. When your people attack the city, please spare my family and me. We promise, Rahab. Leave this red rope hanging from your window. It will be a sign that no one in this house is to be harmed. Joshua's spies did as Rahab had said. After hiding in the mountains for three days, they ran back to camp with their report. That's what Rahab told us, Joshua. Everyone in Jericho is afraid of us. We can defeat this king of Jericho. I'm not so sure, Aram. He had a lot of soldiers. Ah, they were all small. Let's pray to God and thank him. He has done as he said. The promised land is ours. The next day, the 12 tribes marched towards Canaan. But as God had told Joshua, entering their new homeland wasn't going to be easy. How can we cross this river safely? Please, God, give me an answer. The water's too fast. No, it's too fast. I'm not going to this. No, no. How will we get our children and animals across? Don't be afraid. God has shown me a way. Bring out the Ark of the Covenant. Joshua directed the priests to carry the Ark into the river and hold it there. The Israelites were confused what did Joshua have in mind? This can't be safe. Joshua doesn't know what he's doing. Behold, the power of God. As the crowd watched, a miracle happened. <gasps> the priests held up the ark, and God held back the waters. It's just like when Moses parted the Red Sea. It's true, then. God must be with Joshua, as he was with Moses. The Israelites' faith in Joshua grew and grew, for now they knew he followed in the footsteps of Moses. Joshua, choose 12 men, one from each tribe. Tell them to get 12 rocks from the middle of the river from where the priests stood. Carry the rocks and put them down where you stay tonight. In the future, your children will ask, what do these rocks mean? And you will say, the water stopped flowing when the Ark of the Covenant with God crossed the river. These rocks will always remind the Israelites of this.
One evening, Joshua was walking near Jericho. I followed God's commands without question. I've tried to be a good leader, but I'm not a soldier. How can I fight the king of Jericho and his army? Joshua. God, how shall the enemy be defeated? You won't need swords or armor, Joshua. Just have faith in me. To defeat the king and army of Jericho, here's what you must do. Early the next day, Joshua formed the Israelites into a long line. Remember, do as God instructed. Not a word, not a sound from any of you. First came seven priests playing ram's horns. Then the Ark of the Covenant. Then the armed men. They marched one time around the great city. Hmm, this is not fighting. <laughs> this is a parade. Well, I, I guess we won. <laughs> When do we attack the city, Joshua? We don't. Tomorrow we march around it again. Oh, <sighs> and just like today, everyone must be quiet. No shouts of war. The only sounds can come from the ram's horns. So the Israelites marched once around Jericho. Every day, for six days. And for six days, nothing happened. You Israelites are fools! And the biggest fool is your leader, Joshua! <laughs> On the morning of the seventh day, Joshua's people were restless. Joshua, you do not know what you are doing. Our people are tired of marching in circles. We need a soldier for a leader. Yes, let's fight. You're right. I'm not a soldier, but I do have faith in God. He didn't let Moses down and he won't let us down so long as we trust in him. This is the seventh and last day. Who will come with me? I will. All of us. Tell everyone we will march. And march they did. But instead of going around the city just once, as they had done for six full days, Joshua said that God wanted them to march seven times. And on the seventh time around, they did something completely different. Shout, yell, scream, so that the heavens can hear you. Shout, for God has given us Jericho. Yeah! We wandered through the desert sand, hoping we could find God's promised land. And now it's here before us, behind a fortress tall. But it will not be ours until we bring down the walls. Bring down the walls of Jericho. Bring down the walls. Lift your horns and blow. The sound we make is gonna shake. City to the ground, we'll see the promised land when the walls come down. We believe in God, the 
that he is with us here. His power is much greater than that army over there. Our enemies are laughing, but their kingdom soon will fall. When we raise our voices, we will bring down the walls. Bring down the walls of Jericho. Bring down the walls. Lift your horns and blow. The sound we make is going to shake the city to the ground. We'll see the promised land. So shout out loud, shout out strong That wall around the city won't keep us out for long Sing to God one and all That land that we were promised is right behind those walls Bring down the walls With their voices, a few ram's horns, and their faith in God, the Israelites captured Jericho. Joshua, these are the people who helped us, Rahab, her mother and father. You're a brave woman, Rahab. God has watched over you and your family because of your faith and for helping my people. Can we stay and join you, Joshua? Nothing would make me happier. Don't touch me, Israelite. How dare you treat me this way? Why, I'm, I'm the king. You were the king. When I said God promised us this land, you laughed and called me a fool. Who's the fool now? You can't, no. Has anyone seen Turnip? For you. <laughs> Perfect. My friends, our days of wandering are over. We're home. After Jericho was captured, the Israelites kept moving and claimed more and more new land. Their wandering days were over, all because Joshua and the Israelites had faith in God. Long ago, God sent his prophet Samuel to find the future king of the Israelites. Samuel. 
go to Jesse's house in Bethlehem. There you will find the new king over all Israel. Hmm, I wonder who that is. My sons, come into the house. There is a guest here to see you. Huh? Oh. David, you stay there and look after the sheep. We're going inside. Jesse, uh, you say you have eight sons? Yes, and they are such fine young men. Here they come. <laughs> hmm. Which one could it be? Surely this must be God's chosen one. No, Samuel. You are thinking too much about what he looks like. You must look inside. You must look at his heart. Hmm. Wait. There are only seven here. Don't you have another son? Yes, but he is the youngest and the smallest. See him off there guarding the sheep? Him? No, it couldn't be him. Could it? Thank you. I will leave now. You must look at his heart. What's your name, son? David. God has told me that you will be the new king of Israel someday. God is my friend. He helps me save my sheep. Yes, and one day I hope you save us all. Goodbye, David. Goodbye, and God bless. David's three older brothers were called away. David, come over here and pray with me as I bless the men of the family for battle. To go fight for the people of Israel. Eliab, Abinadab, Shammah, may the Lord bless you and keep you and bring you safely home from battle. But Father, what, son? You didn't bless me. I want to fight for Israel. Hmm. Don't worry about us, Father. We're old enough. And strong enough. We can hardly wait to fight the enemy of God's chosen people, the evil Philistines. We'll win and be home before you know it, David. Everybody, wait! Don't leave without me. Please, please let me go, Father. I want to fight for the people of Israel, too. <laughs> What's so funny? I may be small, but I'm brave. Why, just the other day, I saved our whole flock of sheep from a huge, ferocious lion. I hit him with a stone from my sling ah, and knocked him clean out. Want to see how good I'm getting? Whoa! No, David, not now. First, I had to sock that lion right on his nose. Bang! And then I shook that rascal by his whiskers. And then I pulled his jaws apart and rescued our little lamb. And then, and then, 
I'm not afraid of those Philistines. Oh. So please, Father, please let me go fight too. Whoa! <laughs> Guarding sheep isn't exactly the same as fighting the big bad Philistines, little David. Stay home, little brother. Father needs your help to watch over the sheep, and Father can watch over you. Grow up, little lamb. You may be brave enough to fight, but you're just too little. Abinadab, Shama, time to go. Goodbye, Father. Goodbye. 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 Bye. Goodbye. Someday I'll go to battle for the people of Israel, Father. Someday. Now the two great armies met for war in the middle of a vast valley. King Saul led the army of Israelites. But the enemy, the Philistines, had a giant on their side. The giant came marching across the valley toward the army of the Israelites. His legs were as big as tree trunks, his arms were strong as iron, and his steps made the whole earth tremble. <laughs> I am Goliath, the giant! And all of you are nothing but King Saul's little servants. Even if all of you fight me together, you can never beat me! <laughs> so spare yourselves. I dare you choose just one man brave enough to fight. Uh huh? Not me. Not me. Uh, not me either. <laughs> <laughs> Just one man. If he beats me, all of my men will be your servants. But if I slay him, all of you shall be our servants forever. Oh. Now, who is brave enough to fight? A giant! Just step forward! I'll be waiting! Every morning and evening for 40 days, Goliath marched to the center of the valley and gave his great battle cry. Ah! 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 enough. You are nothing but cowards! He said it. He's right. You bet he's right. Whew. 
Well, what do my brothers think? Could I? Ah! Whoa. Ooh. <laughs> no, don't even think about it. I'll try to... Ah! Ooh. You're not risking your life for him. Maybe I'll... Neither are you, Eliab. It's not worth it. Not even to marry King Saul's daughter. Oh, but wouldn't it be great? Being rewarded with the princess's hand in marriage for beating the giant? <sighs> oh, I wish this was over and we could go home to father in Bethlehem. The king will come up with a plan. You watch. <laughs> Bet I can get five in a row. Ah! Now remember, never be afraid. David, that was a good shot, son. Did you see that, Father? Maybe now you'll let me go join the army and fight with King Saul and the Israelites. No, son, I told you before, they won't take you. You're too young to be a soldier, and you've got to get some more meat on those bones of yours. But Father, I'm strong, and I can run like a deer. I said no, David. Now do as I ask, and take this food to your brothers. Then hurry home to tell me how they are. Now be careful, son. I pray you will bring good news. enough to fight? Oh. Are all the Israelites nothing but cowards? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Shamo, what are you doing? Why are you running away? You'd better run yourself. If you know what's good for you. Watch out, boy! But who is that? It's Goliath, the giant. He's the champion for the Philistines against the people of Israel. But why won't anyone fight back? What do you mean? Look at him! He's too strong! He's over ten feet tall! None of us could even lift his spear. But what about King Saul? King Saul will give a rich reward to the man who slays that giant. You'll even let him marry his own daughter. And none of you are brave enough to try? No, because none of us want to die for no reason. Eliab, why won't you fight? Ab Abinadab, why are you afraid? Shama, are you afraid of the giant too? All the soldiers are afraid, little David. Yes, little brother. Aren't you afraid too? You're too young to be here at all, David. Yes, little brother. Go home and take care of sheep where it's safe. No, I can't. Someone has to fight Goliath. 
But who? Everyone here is afraid. I'll fight the giant. I'm not afraid. You? Yes. God is stronger than Goliath. And God will help me. Go tell King Saul. I'm not afraid. <laughs> <laughs> I have news for King Saul. What news? <laughs> so, there's this Israelite champion <laughs> who's really a young shepherd boy. <laughs> Says he wants to fight for King Saul and the Israelites. <laughs> <laughs> Says God will help him fight the giant. <laughs> and he's never even been trained as a soldier. <laughs> Well, tell the foolish lad to go home. King Saul is no use for jokes out here on the battlefield. <laughs> tell the boy. Tell the boy to come here. But sire. Joab, bring the boy here to me. Now. I wonder who he is. I wonder why he's the only one brave enough to fight the giant. I understand a giant of a man and I am not His spear appears to be the size of a small tree and all I've got is a slingshot This Philistine is large but I know who's in charge Looks like he couldn't fight a flea. Make way for the little giant killer. I don't see any giant killer. I don't see anyone. Neither do I. Silence! Make way for this boy. Huh? huh? I said make way for the shepherd boy. The king wants to see him. Oh, oh yes. yes. Certainly, Certainly commander. commander. Right away, sir. <laughs> Your Majesty, I am... <laughs> Silence! Let the boy speak. Please, sir, don't be afraid of the giant. With God's help, I'll fight him for you. I'll fight Goliath for you and for all of the people of Israel. But how can a boy like you fight Goliath? 
You can't match him in size or strength or skill, my boy. Why, you've never even been trained for battle. It's true, your majesty. I am young and small. But God will make me strong. <laughs> if God saves my sheep, God will save me from this giant. Now let me fight the giant for you and the people of Israel. Yes, little David. And may God be with you. Joab, get my sword and shield. Get my armor. Put them on young David. Huh? Joab, I said dress the boy for battle. Huh? Yes. Yes, your majesty. Well, didn't you hear King Saul? Do as he says. <laughs> I can hardly pick up your sword, your majesty. And your shield is much too heavy for me. But, uh, David... God's help is all the armor I need. Please help me, God. Help me fight Goliath the giant for the people of Israel. Can you hear me, Goliath the giant? I am ready to fight. Think you can fight with sticks and stones? You'll be sorry! You fight me with your sharp sword and heavy spear, Goliath, but I fight you in the name of God. chased the Philistines away. The boy killed the giant! Goliath is dead! Where is the boy? Joab, bring him here to me. Little brother! It is you! Our brave baby brother David! Bring the boy here to King Saul! Thank you, my son. Thank God, Your Majesty. And that is how little David beat Goliath the giant with the help of God. This was only one of the many great adventures God had planned for David. David the shepherd boy grew up to become a great king who served God. Throughout David's long and adventurous life, he always remembered the comforting words of God.
In the land of Israel, there was a prophet named Jonah. A prophet taught other people about God and his love. Jonah told his friends and neighbors that God loved all people. And like God, Jonah tried to love all people and all creatures. Your fish looks fresh today, Ophir. Yes, Jonah, the freshest you will ever meet or eat. You know how much I love eating fish. And I'll take a bag of peanuts. I see someone just as hungry as I am. Hungry, little dove? Here, take some of mine. We're all God's creatures. Sounds like someone's having an argument. This is my pot. No, it is mine. I saw it first. No, I did. I need it to carry water. I need it to carry raisins. Stop. Fighting never solves anything. Besides, you're making me dizzy. My friends, please. God doesn't want you fighting. It upsets him. Now neither of you gets the pot. You were acting badly, just like someone from the city of Nineveh. Do you want God to think we act like the Ninevites? Ah, no. no! No, Jonah. Sorry, Jonah. The Ninevites are enemies of our people. I heard they stole a boat full of fish. Come on, Yes, they are thieves. Yes, they are very bad people. See what happens when you fight. From now on, we will act like Israelites and not be bad like the Ninevites. So Jonah had a very important job. He taught people about God's laws. There came a day when God had an even bigger job for Jonah. Hello, Jonah. God, it's nice to hear your voice. I have an important job for you. What is it? I will do anything for you. There are some people who are not obeying my laws, Jonah. Look what they're doing. The people of Nineveh steal. They are not kind to each other. The children of Nineveh do not take care of older people. Others are lazy. And their king pretends not to see the problems. He only cares about eating all day and wearing fancy clothes. Yes, the Ninevites are bad. Send a flood or an earthquake to punish them. No, they are bad because they don't know about me. No one has taught them my laws. Jonah, your job is to go to Nineveh and tell them about me. Me? Go to Nineveh? I can't. Please give me some other job. Tell them of my love. But they are the enemies of my friends and neighbors. You must go, Jonah, right now. In 40 days, I will punish them for being bad. But if you're going to punish them, why should I go tell them about you at all? I don't understand. The Ninevites should be punished for being bad. But what if I tell them all about God and they change? Then maybe God won't punish them. 
I can't do something to help my enemies. Jonah was so confused, he asked his friends what he should do. You know, it's funny, Jonah. Usually, we come to you with questions. This time, I want to know what you think. How can I preach to the enemies of the Israelites? Simple. You can't. Ophir is right, Jonah. Don't go there. Don't tell them about God. You do have a problem, Jonah. If you don't preach to them, you disobey God. If you do preach to them, you'll disappoint all your friends. Nobody said being a prophet was easy, Ophir. <sighs> Wait, I know. I'll just hide from God. <laughs> sure, but where can you hide from God? Why, in your store, of course. I know my plan will work, Ophir. If I hide here for 40 days, then God will punish the Ninevites and no one will be mad at me. You call this a hiding place? Here, let me help you. Uh, Ophir, you don't have to go to that much trouble. Look, if you're going to hide from God, you've got to do it right. There! <laughs> and my shop's never been cleaner. Ophir, do you have any flour for baking biscuits? Yes, yes, in that basket. There. No! Wait! No! No! Now that everything's cleaned up, goodbye, Ophir. What? But, Jonah, why are you leaving? I'm in the way. And I can't hide from God here in Israel. It's the first place he'd look for me. So where will you go? As far away from Nineveh as I can. I'll travel to the other side of the world, to a city called Tarshish. God will never find me there. We'll miss you, Jonah. Thank you. I have a very lonely trip ahead of me because God will not be with me. So Jonah traveled as far away as he could to run away from God. First, he walked across dry deserts. Then he climbed high mountains. He finally came to the town of Joppa and found a ship that was going to sail for Tarshish. Captain, my name is Jonah. Can I sail with you to Tarshish? Sorry, Jonah. This ship only carries sailors and cargo. Besides, it's bad luck to bring a stranger on board, you know. The sailors on this ship weren't Israelites. They believed in many different gods. Ahoy, mate! Help me with this statue! Sir! Why not? <clears throat> what? Please, Captain, I must sail away with you. Why? Because I am running away from God. Why? Because he gave me a job to do and I won't do it. I must hide so he won't find me. Ah! <gasps> Did you see that? A dove! He flew right to Jonah. A dove is a sign of good luck, Captain. Very good luck. With Jonah on board, we will have safe passage. They're right. Welcome aboard, Jonah. So Jonah set sail across the vast sea, headed to faraway Tarshish. 
Jonah saw that the sailors didn't pray to God. They worshiped statues made of stone. Excuse me, what are you doing? Feeding the God of water. If he has a full stomach, he'll make the seas calm. But this isn't a God, <laughs> it's just a rock. My God is the real one. He created the sea, the sky, the animals, all of us, everything. One God created all that? <laughs> I don't think so, Jonah. See, this is the sun god, the god of the wind, the god of plenty. With so much in the world, you need a lot of gods. Yeah, no one god can rule over everything. <laughs> yes, God does. He is the one and only God. Well then, if he is so wonderful, why are you running away from him? He wants me to go to Nineveh and tell them about him. But they are the enemies of my people, and we'd be better off without them. Oh no! Captain! I've never seen a storm like that! Me either! We're in trouble! to their gods, but the storm just grew stronger. Someone has brought our ship bad luck. Very bad luck. We must find out who it is. Let's throw lots. Then we'll know who brought this storm. The captain and his crew, being superstitious, believed that pieces of wood and bone would tell them who brought bad luck to their ship. There! The lots point to the man who brought us bad luck. <gasps> it's Jonah! Where did you come from? And who are your people? I am an Israelite, and I worship the God of heaven. I'm running away from him. And he has found you. Jonah, what can we do? How do we make the storm go away? Throw me overboard. You must save yourselves. Please, Captain. We have no choice. We must throw Jonah into the sea. His god is more powerful than any of our gods. Jonah, I'm sorry. We've done everything we could do. I know, Captain. It's not your fault. I made God angry. It's me, not you, who should be punished. God of the Israelites, we're sorry for having to throw Jonah into the sea. <laughs> Poor Jonah. May your God forgive you, Jonah. Jonah found himself in the whale's belly. Now he was really alone. God, I'm sorry for trying to hide from you. Do you hear me, God? Jonah prayed to God for three days and three nights. It's so dark inside this well, and I'm lost at the bottom of the sea. I was a fool to run from you 
Now I know just what you want from me In the belly of a whale One day has gone by I promise to be true And all you ask I'll do In the belly of a whale Oh please hear my cry Never will I hide Your word will be my guide From the belly of a whale What can I do to thank you After that, Jonah was no longer alone. Hello, Jonah. Oh, God. I'm so glad that you're here with me. You, you tried, tried to hide from me. Oh, yes. And I now know that was really, really wrong. Jonah, you have learned your lesson. Come on, let's get you out of here. Jonah, Nineveh is behind that hill. Hurry, go tell them about me and about my love. God, I'm ready to do it now. So Jonah went to Nineveh. And what he had to say was so wonderful. All of the people listened. They believed, and best of all, they changed. God says we shouldn't steal from each other. We are all brothers and sisters in this world. Would you steal from your own family? God says we shouldn't hurt anyone weaker than us. Since we are all God's children, we should protect each other. Children, stop. God says we should honor our elders. Don't forget, they helped raise us and looked after us. Even the children were changed, and they gathered around Jonah, just like sheep around their shepherd. Hey, farmer, God says we all have jobs to do, and we should work hard. We should listen to him, since he's the one who gave this wonderful world to us. O oh, king of the Ninevites, this is no way to lead your people. God tells us to care for one another. Ha! Why should I care what your God thinks? Because he is going to punish everyone in this city for being bad. Nineveh will be like this grape. Please believe me, king of the Ninevites. I was sent by the one and the only God. 
You only have a few days. I do believe you, Jonah. Then know his love and obey his laws. That's all he wants. Jonah told the king all about God's laws. My people, people of Nineveh, hear me. For one week, all of us must fast. No one will eat anything for seven days, and all of us will wear rags. If we do this, we will show Jonah's God how sorry we are for acting so badly. After Jonah told the Ninevites about God and his laws, they changed their ways. Jonah then left the city. He sat on a hill above Nineveh to watch God punish them. Jonah, I'm proud of you. The Ninevites have changed their ways. But aren't you still going to punish them? I am not going to punish anyone, Jonah. But God, they are such bad people. Shouldn't they be punished? They have heard my voice through you, Jonah, and have changed their hearts. I love them as I love the Israelites, as I love all people. I was afraid of this. I saved the enemies of my people. Go home, Jonah. It will be okay. No, wait! Please, God, I am more confused than ever. Jonah didn't know what to do, where to go. He just started walking into the desert. Unfortunately, the desert was hot and he didn't have any food. I'm so tired, hungry, and thirsty. Thank you, God. Thank you for this plant and for saving me. The next morning, the plant was dead, and Jonah was mad. He was mad because God let a worm destroy the plant. Jonah, why are you angry? You let this wonderful plant die that gave me food and shelter, like you took away my hope yesterday when you didn't punish the Ninevites. You're mad because the plant is dead. You cared more about this small plant than the whole city of Nineveh. But you didn't do anything to keep it alive. So? How do you think I'd feel if I punished all the people of Nineveh? There are men, women, and children that I made and cared for over many years. They never knew or loved me until you came. Shouldn't I still care about them? Yes. Yes, you should. Go home and tell your friends about Nineveh and the plant. So Jonah went home. I can't wait to see my friends and eat all my favorite foods. Except for one food. <laughs> it's going to be a long time before I eat fish again. Jonah was accepted back by his friends, and he spent the rest of his life teaching about God's laws, and especially about God's love. <laughs>